Welcome to Arts for the Health of It, a podcast where you will discover creative ways to improve your health and well-being. Someone may have told you that art isn't for you, but they were wrong. Anyone can create arts for the health of it. No talent or experience necessary. I'm just a little songbird. Try to fly my way homeward with the melody and I make the beat. Don't know where it'll take me, take me. Cause when I'm in the dark of night, I sing my way back to the light. Come along with me and your heart will see that a song changes everything. Oh. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Arts for the Health of It. I'm your host, Richard Wilmore. And I'm Constanza Rader. Very good to be here today. Before we start, can I just say that watching that video, the intro video makes me realize I need to make another one. Because I think like you're always very consistent in all of those little (laughs) shots. And I've gone through, I think, 25 different cameras and 14 different (laughs) microphones since this podcast has started and way too many hairstyles. And my face is like thinner and fatter in some of them. It's very (laughs) funny to watch that. (laughs) You're like, huh, okay. I I don't know. And Winnie's in there. It's a very funny little thing to me. Anyway, that's not why we're here. This is not my therapy session. So cliffhanger, you may see a new intro soon. (laughs) Yeah, season two can't get here soon enough, I think. (laughs) Well, we're really excited today. We're talking with artist Tony Swaby. And if I mispronounce that, Tony, let me know when you come back when you come on. Um, But he is a portrait artist and he discovered his love of the arts and use it as uses it as a way to return to joy. And he discovered all that um, during his experience with cancer. So he's going to be talking about that with us today. And he's going to be sharing um, some of the resources that he has to help other people find that joy in portraiture. Um, So yeah, we're excited to talk with him. And he said right before we went live that he's done three portraits already today. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. What have you done today, Richard? (laughs) Right. (laughs) I went to the gym and then wanted to take a nap. That's what I wanted to do. (laughs) <laughs> That's insane to me. So uh, I want to, this is from Tony. After 30 years of working in data management, design and development, he got cancer. Determined to live a better life, he developed something called the joy principle. At the core was to do things that brought him joy. One such thing was making portraits. And he started making portraits in October 2019 and hasn't stopped. He has over a thousand of them and he now wants to share his approach and the things he's learned. So let me change all the screens and bring out Tony Swaby. Hi, Tony. Hi. Hi. (laughs) Welcome. Welcome. What time is it there? Where are you and what time is it? It is, I'm in uh, England, I'm in Yorkshire, and it is 5.09, PM. which is, which is uh, tea time in Yorkshire. Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking to you from the future, excellent. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> so it's definitely. not crazy that you've done three portraits today because it's only 11 a.m. Yeah. here. When you yeah, said yeah, that, yeah. I was like, I haven't yeah. been up that long. Like, no, what? no, well, today is, is, is a long day. I've been up since five this morning, so oh, 12 hours for me, so... <laughs> Well, we'll we'll make this quick so you can go to bed. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. As you said, like I was saying before, um, that you've done three today. Is that normal, or did you just have yeah. like an urge? And are these just random? Like, are these actual people, or yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's that, just stuff that, you're making up? No, it varies. It's always from reference. I always draw from life, um, or from video. I do certain things that some artists don't do um i um i i like to draw um the emotion for me it's all about an emotional connection that's what it responds to an emotional connection that's what makes portraits work it's not about making photographic replicates it's about that emotional connection and it's very much um i mean i talk about in my course about um that drawing is an art and um because i, I believe that we connect as as in a childlike way to um, to humans, to each other. And it's that response that we need to do. We need to be the curious child. That's how we draw, that's how we properly draw, is to try and make sense of the world. 
Um, and also we're still doing it in, in doodles and things. I'm still trying to make sense of things. And that's that's really what, for me, what drawing is about. So um, um, it, the emotional connection and the response determines the way I, I, uh, I treat a portrait. And often they can be really quick. They can be 15 minutes, you know, in a, in a portrait. And um, because I, and when I connect to it, when I you see, I don't want to draw every every line that I see. I want to draw enough for for you to see what I see. So it's just enough. It's always about capturing the essence. That's what drawing a portrait is all about. So uh, yeah, so that's that's if if sometimes it's one a day and other other times it'll be five a day, and I oh. work on them simultaneously. Because wow. I don't, I, I keep swapping over from one board to another, and uh, and that's you know that's how it is for, for me. And it depends. I mean, if it's oil painting, you have to wait for it to dry and you know all that sort of thing. But um, but generally with charcoal, it's it pretty quick. Hmm. Well, can you tell us a little bit about your story? Your your yeah, journey, yeah. how how cancer played a part, how the arts yeah. played a part of that. Yeah. Well, what happened was, and this is probably something else that you could find useful, is that. After I went, it was a kind of life or death thing with the um, with the cancer. Um, I've got uh, bowel cancer, but it was a, a, a blockage, uh, completely blocked. And um, I was rushed in and ha had to be operated on straight away. Um, and they said I'd had it for about eight years, but that it was just manifested at Christmas in, in 2017. And... Um, I um, I I've always had this method of coping with things by remembering things, that, joyful things in my life, um, and I always refer to it as my joy shield. So I I had this shield thing idea, and um, somebody came to see me, and um, a religious person came to see me um, about the prospect of what's going about to happen. Not, I'm not religious, but my mother is, and she sent this priest to see me. And uh, and he asked me things like, he said, had I got any fears about what's about to happen or what was af would happen after it, uh, um, the event? And um, I said, no, because, and in a way, it, it, it fired up my joy shield because of all the things, my sons and my wife and getting, you know, married and, and, uh, and honeymoon in Paris, all those things were such joyful events that they became so strong that I literally w went through it um, with no fear at all because of this shield. And I didn't really understand what it was that was doing this. Um, and afterwards I decided to try and sort it out and try and think about what it was and, and break it down and why joy is such a, a precious thing and how it had been trivialized because it's such a short word. It, you see it on Christmas cards and it's like, so everybody uses that. I mean, it's more popular now, but back in the day, it was just a trivial little word, but it's such a powerful word. It's the, it's the, it's the uh, seed of hope. You know, it's the, it's the um, essence of life is joy. Um, and that's all we need to live for in the moment, joy in the moment. So it kind of, I went through the, the the um the process of putting together the joy principle and i've developed a, a a tool where you can measure how much joy you've got in your life it's online you can just go there and ask you certain questions to um um uh, set baselines about how you feel about your family and your friends and the world around you and then it asks you have you met someone new today have you made new friends or have you seen your family have you spent time with somebody who helped somebody ask you all these things and it gives you a score at the end of it and you can work out there's about four or five hundred people every week use the joy print the joy meter as i call it to find out how much joy they've got in their life so i'll, I'll put a link in it and you, and you can even put the link around but but it's just it's a free thing it's just an app on 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 the web and and so when i had recovered from the the cam, cam, cancer um i uh I just wanted to do things that brought me joy. I want to spend time with people that brought me joy. Because there's a, the, the, the truth of it is that it's people that bring us joy, not just doing the things like painting, them, but it's 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 people that bring us joy. They're the, they're the, the most precious source of joy, um, and we have to embrace that. And that's what that's what the joy principle was about. Was about. But I wanted to do things that brought me joy and i no longer wanted to do database management systems 
and all the things that don't bring me joy because coding is not something anybody wants to do really there's no joy in coding I can we ask uh, stanzi's husband that isn't that what does? uh yes he i think you probably agree right now <laughs> <laughs> if he's watching he's probably like yep true yep, there's, no joy. there's no joy in that javascript that doesn't work you know no, so there's three days, three days of trying to figure out the script. Anyway, so um, I didn't want to go back to that. So um, I started, um, uh, well, I, I just tried to paint it. And um, for no reason, it was just the joy of doing it. And uh, I, I, by the October of 2019, I decided I wanted to do charcoal. So I, I, I figured out how to make charcoal because I didn't have any. And, uh, and start and, 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 and sort of painting out, sort of drawing charcoal portraits. And that that is, uh, uh, from that, people kept asking me why. And you've just said about the speed of, you know, I'm doing, it's not about the speed. It's because I have to make this emotional connection with people. And at that moment, just the, the reason why it's so quick, uh, I try to explain to people is that you know, at the moment you connect with somebody, it's fleeting. It's we connect and assess and value somebody in seconds to, to to sort of sustain that over a period of time while you're trying to draw the face. So you've, you're connected with their essence and you feel that connection. You can't sustain that for hours. You have to capture that quickly. Just as you make a, you know, a decision about somebody, then instantly meet them. That's the same thing when you're trying to draw a portrait, you capture that essence within seconds. Mm -hmm. Anything after that is just decoration. And it really is about that moment. And uh, like I say, it was it was the the joy of doing that experiencing that and it, it's hard to sustain it because um being happy and, and jubilant and excited for long periods of time it's exhausting <laughs> so so you just have to do it quickly and that's why i ended up doing that so quickly and, and people started asking me and I'm, i started to break it down and one of the main things that i i, I tell people is zero expectations art there is no expectation there's no failure there's no there's no win in in uh, in make it art you just make it it's the it's it exists it doesn't exist then it does exist and that's all that you have you don't have to have these standards you have to apply to you don't have to understand techniques it's not about any of those things it's about the experience of doing it and bringing something into the world that didn't exist before um, if it's a portrait, it's even better because unlike landscapes, which, you know, they sort of, you know, anybody can draw a landscape. But when it comes to people's faces, when you capture their, their essence, that's a wonderful thing. You cannot, you cannot experience art in any other way than capturing somebody's essence. And that's such a precious thing if you can do it. Um, but it, it revolves around this you cannot fail you, you, you just got to have no expectations you've got to connect with your curious child which is where we all come from in terms of our creativity everybody was creative with one bit it's when adults told you you weren't when an adult said to you that cow doesn't look like a cow is the point that you decided that you're not going to be an artist but that was wrong that was wrong it's not about nurturing it's about understanding the relevance of creativity in our human development it's a cognitive process but people get put off very early on by ignorance whether it's adults with parents with teachers or whatever it is they don't understand the value of creativity in the human development and that's that for me is where i sort of sit with the teaching side of it because it transforms i mean i can transform somebody's drawing within 20 minutes by telling them these things and the, the biggest thing is to say drawing isn't art and, and I explain why it's about this, this creating this, this, this pure creative intention. That's what it's about. And that's where you see true art. All great artists have that. These people that replicate photographs and make them, you know, detailed, they're not artists. They're just technicians. But true artists, Picasso said it, when he referred to drawing like a child, he meant this ability to connect, this ability to actually be a, you know that pure creative intention that's what children have and it just gets knocked out in them as they get older you know it's sort of it's just driven away and, it, and that's where i one of my students i tried to bring it back try to help them to connect with it but a lot of people <laughs> it's well it's buried very deep and to try and bring it back is very difficult as as a arts educator i resonate with what you're saying because there's even in arts education, there's a bent toward technique and artistry and creativity 
often suffers. And, you know, even in music, the artistry is in the form of trying to interpret someone else's art and, you know, play it expressively. And, but people that really, like you said, that transcend that, that are true artists, like you find them at all levels of technique. Like I have, I have, I have a student right now who everything that comes out of her mouth is art and it's like her, she sings with her soul and it doesn't mean every sound that she makes is perfect, but that like, doesn't matter. I want to hear her sing because her, she sings with her soul. And I think that's maybe what you're talking about is the portraiture, the art, the it's that soul expression. Yeah. 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 It is. It's, it is that that pure creative intention. It's, it is that, and it's and it's in, in all of us. That's the thing. It's in all of us. That's the that's the tragedy that people. I once years ago saw a guy who, who was who was painting, and he was he was in his nineties, and he was not very well, and he had to hold a brush with two hands to do it. And I said to him, "It's such a shame that you had to wait so long to be able to do this." Mm. All those years of not doing that, and I, as I said this afternoon, not. You know, work's been a, a bind at the moment and it's difficult with it being nights and things. But this afternoon, I was all, all day I've been a drawing and uh, and it and it cleanses it, it takes me to a different to a different place. And that 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 sort of ability to do that, to repair, you know, sort of feeling tired or or just you know overwhelmed by life, art and being creative can do that. And that's the value of it. That's where the, the healing healing part is, you know, because it's and it's obviously something that's in all, in all of us, but we unfortunately it gets it gets buried. Mm. So true. You have to unmute yourself in order for people to see it or hear you. <laughs> um, you said yeah. before that I think you said something like anybody can draw a landscape. Um, which I thought <laughs> was very funny because we, you know, we work at Hearts and Art with a lot of adult patients who are so afraid to do a stick figure let alone a landscape (laughs) um because they don't understand that yet that it doesn't really matter and that you can do it um were you always creative and artistic like has portraits and things been something that has been a part of your life or did that sort of develop because of of what you went through with your cancer i um i have been um can you hear me all right yes yeah i have been uh years ago i was uh i used to paint watercolors landscapes funny enough <laughs> and and um and um it was i did it for the wrong reasons and that is a, a, this alludes to what's happened um with the portraits i never painted portraits i never painted uh, I drew any portraits um um uh, but I I used to do it. Um, you see, there's there's there are people. We've talked about the you know the, the, the adults saying that that cow doesn't look like a cow. There are people that just say, oh, fair enough, I can't draw. But there are other people that try and make the cow look like a cow. And I was one of those people, just to please the people that said, you know, oh this is prescribed as what art is, so you have to conform to that. And that's what I did. And and so I was drawing landscapes and um, painting landscapes in watercolor, and doing it for the wrong reasons. I was doing it to please other people. It was not beneficial to me. I hated doing it. I do it once a year, and uh, uh, ultimately I stopped doing it. It was not. It just not, wasn't fun. So it, there was no benefit from from doing it for me. And that's kind of what happened when I when I came back to it all those thirty odd years later. Um, and doing portraits which i'd never done and working in oils which i'd never done what was happening um was um, that it was beneficial that I, I was feeling the it was for nobody else but my own benefit and i and i really felt the impact of that um i didn't want to show it anybody and i didn't want their approval i didn't want their their and to buy it or anything i didn't do it for them i just did it for my own benefit and that and that is where that the healing started and it was just for the joy of doing it that's why it's called the joy of portraiture it was just for the joy of doing it so um the um it, it i i kind of played the game a little bit all those years when i was a teenager but but it was it was just i was being steered in the wrong way and uh, and 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 
I um, ultimately, you know, stopped doing it and went, got into coding. <laughs> so, so um, and uh, not not uh, and uh, not not a fun place to be. I now know it's taken me thirty years to work out that it's, I didn't really want to do that. <laughs> Well, glad you figured that out <laughs> before the end. Um, I, I it reminds it reminds me of the Elon Musk quote, which I think I'm gonna I will probably butcher it, but essentially the essence of was that people, um, really smart people will often perfect something, work to perfect something that shouldn't exist, and I feel like sometimes maybe what it sounds like is we can sometimes get uh, lose the purpose of art and get lost in the doing of art and like the technique and you know like what I talk about with my students the technique should serve the purpose the technique is not the purpose yeah, like, yeah, the technique yeah, serves yeah. the purpose yeah. is that kind of like what you're you're getting at yeah, that yeah, yeah 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 it is it's it's uh, they used to say something about um the medium is not a message didn't they and it's mm -hmm. the same kind it's the same kind of i mean that's an old an old adage that but that's the same kind of thing it's never the technique is never um the art um um the i, I say to students that um you shouldn't confuse skill with art mm. just at best it's the means to create it and at worst it's the reason not to mm. and that's Ooh. what and whoa, that's whoa, whoa. what hold on say that again <laughs> you should never you should never confuse skill with art because at best it's the means to create it and at worst it's the reason not to that's the quote of the day <laughs> that'll be on a social media post coming soon for arts for the health of it. yeah it's it, it is that because it's it's when people you know when when people when i see students and they get wrapped up in the the technique and and i've got to sort of drag them kicking and screaming away from it they <laughs> really this is not you know the te no amount of technique will fix a bad drawing if you can't get things in the right place, and i have this technique that i call the three dots i can teach people to draw portraits using three dots so it's it's that's my thing i use i use a system that i developed and it helps people to draw portraits um it helps people to draw full stop but it's just just about these three dots and um it was because some students were getting bogged down with technique with all the the anatomy and the and the methods the riley and the and the um uh, the, there's another one the um I forget his name now, but the, there are different techniques that people get embedded with all the academic training, and they just just weren't getting it. And as soon as I said, "Let's do it with three dots," it changed, and then they could draw. And then it just it's just using three dots to work out how accurate your observation is and improve your your observation, and then use the three dots to actually start positioning the elements of the face. And that's all it is. Um, so it takes away all the complications of geometry and understanding the cheekbones. And the, see, I don't know any of that. I don't know any of the anatomy of a face or anything. I just draw what I see. Um, and I have a kind of, I say three dots and it's about light, shape and tone. That's all it's about. So those are the three things you have to remember when you're looking at a portrait and, uh, and it's, it's easy. And well, anything, anything can be drawn that way. Richard looks like he has a question. Go ahead. Because that's so fascinating to me that you like, I like, I know nothing about the face and structure and, and, but I do it with three dots. I just yeah, can't, yeah. I want to throw up well, since we're talking about that. I just want to throw up some of your portraits. Wow. Just three dots, everyone. And if you're you listening, too. you got to go to our YouTube channel or our Facebook and see. It's just some crazy. Artwork. Wow. Well, and what's the, what's ironic, you know, cause you're, you say your focus isn't to make like picture perfect um uh renditions of these images but they're they're realistic yes they're very yeah, realistic yeah, yeah. But well that's the that's the thing it's the it's the, the realism thing versus real realistic um mm -hmm. and my, for me it's about capture if you capture the light of someone's face these sort of the tones and the shadows of the face then you capture their essence um mm -hmm. and, it, and the realism if i can um I, I i've tried i'm scanning around now to try and find one portrait that's just knocking around 
I've got <laughs> they're everywhere in here. But if you ever look at what I do, is uh, I do this thing called reduction, which is where to take away. See, see, the the um, lightness is never in the detail. It's never in the detail because we can see people's face from a hundred yards. Uh, we can recognize them from a hundred yards. So that's never about eyelashes, and it's never about you know sort of the waves in their hair. It's about something else. So we need to take away all those things that, that we see as we get closer to get to the essence of what we need to capture a likeness. So that's what it's about. If you look at the, the way that I, I um, focus on the elements and sometimes they're not even drawn, they're very, they're very loose in the way they are, but yet they look realistic because I've focused on the bits that matter. I've reduced the, the elements to the, to the bare minimum. And though that's why it's realistic because one of the things that happens is that, like I say, I don't want to show you, I don't want to draw every line. I want to just draw enough so you can see what I see. And, and what happens is when you engage the viewer in a way that they have to complete the drawing because you've only just hinted at the eye shape or whatever, they're engaged within it. And all of a sudden they relate to it even more because they're filling in the blanks. Mm. So that's, part and parcel of what what it is to make a realistic um, uh, portrait but like i say it's never about trying to make it detailed it's never about trying to get every eyelash or, or anything like that it's it's something completely different it's it's a much more um focused uh, approach to making portraits but uh, inevitably they look realistic i, I can't help that hmm. that's fascinating the one thing that comes one question that comes to my mind or one thought that comes to my mind is you're talking about capturing the essence of people. And there's, there's this, it seems like there's this deep sense of, of knowing and really seeing and noticing people. And I wonder how people respond when you show them the portrait that you make of them. Well, there's, there's two stages to this, right? So I've just done my friend, John, I'm just going to just let me just jump up and I'll show up. Yeah, go get it. Just done my, my friend, John, who I work with, and uh, this is him. Oh my gosh! Wow. This, this is John with his sneaky little look. <laughs> <laughs> I can see there. So, so I've just no. There was two stages to that. Now, I one one thing I always like to capture people's um, natural state. Now, when you're painting a portrait, often you get the portraits there. You know, you see it where people like they'll sit like that and they'll stare. And stare. People draw that. Now, that's not real. That's just somebody posing for a portrait. What I do is, um, and this is something that I don't think other artists do, I film people. Hmm. I film them on my phone, whether it's a model or whether it's like John when we're in the canteen at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I, and I film him. I film him and uh, while he's chatting to me. And whilst he's chatting to me, he's talking and he's just laughing and joking, and he's very relaxed, and I capture that moment when I think that, is his essence that's his natural state and then I, I then capture that image and then i draw that image so that is what the state that john was in <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning the other day and uh, and uh, and he was looking at me quite annoyed as you can tell <laughs> like, why are you sticking that thing in my face we won't ask how many drinks he had before that video <laughs> no no not at, all, oh. not at all we were working that we were, no. we were working oh. <laughs> so okay. so, uh, so that, but the point is that that, that the point uh, that, that what you capture the image or maybe, maybe if i draw somebody from life um it's a very it's a very unnerving um proposition for someone to sit to have the portrait because they someone's looking in their soul that's mm. that thing it's often when you talk about um painting self-portrait you often talk about you know you're exposing your soul to the world but when you when you when you're uh, drawing somebody that the idea that someone's really looking at you particularly women if they if men men are not so bad but females tend to be very un, you know uncomfortable when someone's really staring at them and um so there's that that's one aspect of it. you have to get over that and what i do with if it's a um a live person then i chat a lot with them and i get them to relax and i get to know them better and then i can paint them better because i i know who they are really um and if i can video it i'll do that as well um if it's a, a still image I try and imagine a persona for that person. And it, again, it's about connecting to the human aspect of it. So I, I try and imagine what they're thinking and where they've been and where they're going to go and what kind of life they have. And 
So I imagine that. So that gives me a better insight and a better connection with them. So, and that's what I, I put into the drawings. Um, and then when I show them, um, well, generally it's 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 weird. It's kind of um, one guy. I did my the guy that fixes my car <laughs> for Christmas. I did his portrait. I said I would, and I did his portrait. And now this is a big hairy guy that fixes my car, <laughs> and I, I have I never see him with oil on his hands and his face and whatever <laughs> but i drew him and and he was in tears when i gave it to him and i didn't know what to do i didn't, I didn't know he was he was moved to tears when i gave him the portrait now that's weird it's a it's a strange kind of to, this is the thing about portraiture it's a it's a it's a different level of art when you capture particularly when you capture people's essence it's a it's not like you know a, a, a landscape thing because a landscape as you know with landscapes it, it generally relates to um uh, things like place identity you know if you're, in, you're talking about sort of philosophical or psychological terms you're talking like place identity so so a painting of a seascape or whatever where someone's been on holiday that moves them and said oh yeah i was there i remember all so it triggers all those memories um painting people or doing portraits is a different level of of um a response with whether it's a subject or their you know their, their, uh, their friends and family it's a different level of response and that that's it as i say that's quite a fascinating thing i've just, i've done a lot of things where uh, the same guy the mechanic his his auntie was 99 and um and his other auntie had died so he gave me a picture of them in the in the heyday in the 50s and i drew it and she got dementia the the one that's still alive in scotland she, she's you know she's not in a home or anything she, she's still at home but she got dementia so he took it up on a birthday and she instantly recalled the days, you know, those from that moment that the, in the fifties, from the image that I'd I'd, uh, I'd drawn. So it's such a powerful thing. It's 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 far more powerful than, as I say, landscapes. Landscapes works in a different arena. It's not as as as, as focused as, as portraits. But people, generally, people are, are pretty good. I mean, I don't I don't I don't do it for money. Um, otherwise, I'd. I wouldn't be working nights at weddings, but yeah, but uh, I do it. I, the, the big thing for me is teaching people because I want people to understand that it's not. It's a bit like you. It's, this is not a, a hard, difficult thing to do. This is good for your soul. This is this will bring joy to your life. And don't get hung up on you know st uh, um, uh, skills and materials and all that sort of thing. You can't fail at this. This is something you cannot fail at um and and as i say that's what i try to get out. not many people take me up on the offer to be quite honest with you <laughs> I've, got, I've got on my website if you've seen there's 116 videos on there of me drawing portraits so there's nearly 200 hours and i've got four students <laughs> four, four stu i've spent all that time doing all those videos and i've got four students that's, that's terrible well you might have more after this i i think you've really sold us on portraiture <laughs> so if someone wants to start like how tell us about the resources you have what's something that they can maybe start with uh, well uh, the, the, the 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 thing is that i don't have a massive amount of skills uh sorry skills massive amount of uh, of tools i have i make my own charcoal let me just quickly 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 sorry quickly um i have a bucket of um I have a bucket of charcoal. Oh, this, this is I make charcoal from vine that grows in the garden, and that's a piece of it there. Look, you see, oh, wow. it just grows in the garden, and I make it out of that. And I have a putty rubber and some cheap ca cartridge paper. So the entry, the sort of tool entry thing, is zero cost more or less. Tis of tis with me, just the cheap paper. Um, um, but um, as far as um, Getting into, if you went to a website, you can understand. I mean, I talk about mindset on the website. I don't know if you've seen the, the when I talk about how important the mindset is. Um, and a lot of that runs through in the videos. I always talk about having the right mindset and right attitude to it, which is all about, you know, um, not zero expectations and, and, uh, and really not people people make it difficult for themselves to become, you know, to make portraits. Um, so as far as, if they wanted to they could there's a two-day free pass to the to all the videos so you just sign up for that and you can see all the videos there's lots of there's challenges on there there's the, the dot thing is explained on there as a challenge um so and just pick and choose i, I literally supply an image 
and I show people how I draw it. So they can do, they can take that image and they draw it in the same way, if they want to draw it in the same way. But I talk about how I do it, how I approach it, and uh, it's very simple to do. It's not a, you know, I don't make it difficult. I, a lot of people run these courses where it is months of, you know, six months' time you've got to draw a portrait kind of thing. That's not, that's not me. I just want people to be enjoying the process as quickly as possible. Hmm. Cool. So your, your website is Tony Swaby.com. Yeah. S W A B Y. Yeah. com. So you can go check out all those resources. Yeah. I want to like turn this off so I can go sign I, up and I do it right now. <laughs> like you make it. <laughs> like you were talking about like your attitude and joy like you just talking to you like makes me want to think that i can do it <laughs> like, well, you can't, like you you've sold me on the fact that i can do it i'm excited I'm, i want to sign up <laughs> this is great um i know we're out of time but i want to ask one last question and well two last questions um how has making your own art materials changed the way, or maybe it hasn't, like changed the way you make art? Um, well, first of all, it's better. I mean, I mean, uh, you can buy the expensive things, um, the, the charcoal, for instance. And uh, I did it recently. I did a, 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 a sort of a, a like for like test with the stuff that I make and the stuff you buy. And it's not nowhere near as good. Uh, one of the things I talk about, and you'll see in some of the videos, I talk about what I expect from the tools. Because I, when I use a piece of charcoal, I expect it to be. I don't want to be keep changing it. I just want to use one piece, and that's it. I want it to to uh, have from a from a technique point of view. I want it to have, uh, to fulfil all the requirements. I want it to be dark enough. I want it to be, I want it to be soft enough. I want it to make uh, very delicate marks if if required. Um, um, but that, that aside, the, the thought of um, making art, I mean, I've done it with clay as well. I've, I, we've got Somebody said to me, I bet you could draw with dirt. Someone once said to me, if you're a true art, artist, you can draw with the blood in your veins. That's what <laughs> they said. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and he said, well, could you make art with dirt? And so I, the nearest thing I could find was clay in the garden. So I let it dry and made it, and I drew it, did a portrait in clay. Um, but there's something about... Uh, making uh, art with materials that you've made that mm. doesn't it, it's not like getting it from the shop and all the the problems it's almost like because i mean i tried 17 different kinds of wood to find the right wood for me it doesn't necessarily i mean i, try, I use willow and all the rest of it uh, uh, ivy's a vine and I, I i used to use jasmine but it, it's not doesn't grow in the garden anymore but but now i use ivy and um so I tried all these different, and the joy of trying to mm. find was as much a joy as it was actually making art with it, because because mm. it was it was just that I don't know it's that kind of exploration into something that was different. I was still being creative. I was still trying to find the, the right you know the right tool to do the job, um, and it's such an enjoyment. And even now, I, I really like making it. I mean, I make so much of it, I don't need it all, but I just I just like making it. You know, I put in I'm making a little tin. I'll just again. Now, sorry about it. <laughs> There's more. There's more charcoal. Maybe your four students will no, buy no, it from no. you. I just I'm making a little tin like that. I put it in a little tin like that, and we've got coal fires in the house, so uh, oh. I can just put it on the fire and uh, and away you go. And that's oh, it. Wow. It's just it's just, just uh, four four hours, and it's um, it, it, I leave it on for uh, well, I don't. I used to with I made it with hawthorn for a long time. It doesn't grow in the states, but hawthorn was the my preferred choice. But it's um, because it was more like graphite. Hmm. But now I just use the um, uh, the ivy because I get such a range of tones. But it is such a, a fulfilling thing to actually make the stuff that you make the art with. Uh, and people look at me strange. Someone said yesterday, you make your own charcoal. It's, it's easy. It's, it's, it's really easy. There's no effort at all in making it. And it's certainly less effort than going down the shop and buying it. And it's a lot cheaper. So <laughs> It's probably like growing your own food. It's, it's, one, it's on a line. It's on a yeah. par with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My final question is, how's your health? It's good. I just I've I've had my final um, uh, um, procedure, shall we say, uh, about three weeks ago, and mm -hmm. that was okay. And then um, I'm, I'm I've got to have my last blood test now, either this week or next week, and hopefully 
uh, I'm okay. I, I, I kind of this there are side effects. I've got you know things that are wrong with me because of it, but uh, but I'm okay. I'm okay. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. That's I would like to go now so I can go to tonyswaby.com and sign up. <laughs> 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 so as much as I'd like to continue to talk to you, I would like to also say thank you for being here. Goodbye. So I can go do that. It's been um, an absolute pleasure. It has yeah. been a pleasure talking to you. And I am very thankful that you jumped on with us today. Thank you. It's, I am, uh, it's been great. I really enjoyed it. Well, thank you for watching and listening wherever you're doing that. Make sure you're subscribing wherever you're watching and listening. We have new episodes and new interviews all the time. Keep creating everyone. We will see you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Arts for the Health of It, a podcast produced by Hearts Need Art, creative support for patients and caregivers, in partnership with the National Organization for Arts and Health. You can help others learn about the healing power of the arts by subscribing, sharing, and reviewing the podcast wherever you listen or watch. The podcast is hosted by Richard Wilmore, co-hosted by Constanza Rader. Our theme song, Songbird, is written and performed by Natalie Lane. Visit heartseedart.org to learn how you can support our mission to create joy with people facing life-altering health challenges. Join us next week to learn more ways you can create arts for the health of it. The views expressed on this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views of Heart Scene Art, their staff, board members, or other affiliates. All content is created for informational purposes only. This podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice or to diagnose and treat any health condition. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health professional with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you heard on this podcast.